Hey everybody, this is Ryan Pressman with Late Night Music Club and The Amped Blog. You're watching Mubu TV, Music Business Television. Hi, we're back. We're coming to you live from Sync Summit 2015 here in Santa Monica, California. We caught up with producer, songwriter, engineer, and multi-instrumentalist Eric Robinson. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. You know, you do a lot of things. You're a songwriter, you produce, you engineer, you also play a lot of instruments. In your vision today, in your view, with the talent you work with, how do you define the role of a record producer? Uh, today, a record producer is all-encompassing of helping an artist, being their psychologist, their interpreter, their mitigator between uh, label, manager, uh, publisher sometimes. For me, I see myself as a multi-hyphenate. Uh, there's nothing that I don't do. Uh, sometimes it involves uh, taking music that I've recorded and getting it to uh, music supervisors. Sometimes it involves me going at 2 o'clock in the morning to console an artist after something's happened to them. Uh, oftentimes it's just fulfilling whatever an artist needs and uh, in, these, in this day and age of constricted budgets, uh, labels do less and less development and producers are expected to do more and more and bring stuff to market that is basically ready to go. Okay. It's interesting listening to you talk about the role, the interaction you have in the role with an artist. Based on that, I'm curious, what do you use as a criteria? What are the things that turn you on to say, yes, I want to work with this artist, or this isn't for me? Uh, uh, first of all, a compelling voice. That's, okay. that's the first and primary, above all, thing. Okay. Uh, second, that they have something to say. Okay. That it's not just, oh, I want to sing, and I have a nice voice. Because there are a lot of people who have great voices, and want to sing. Um, you have to have something to say. Third is presence. Someone that has that it factor that you can't take your eyes off them and you just want to see what they're going to do next. And you see that with a lot of stars today. Even someone like Adele, who I think when she first came out, people thought, well, she's not a supermodel, but she has a great voice. She has something to say. and. Uh, that was my third thing. Presence. Uh, and she has incredible presence, and people want to see what she's going to do. So those are the three things that I really look for. One of the things that I've heard over the years, and I've heard it from a lot of very successful producers who have talked about this concept of learning from your mistakes, and I think the way that George Martin put it was you have to fail to succeed. Absolutely. And he says, you know, a lot of times, I thought this was interesting, he said a lot of times my failures uh, what I perceive is, you know, professional failures have taught me a lot more than my successes. I want to ask you the same question. What have your failures taught you about your work? Well, I see a big part of my job as pushing an artist and getting the most out of who they are and what they're capable of. That's my job. Sometimes I've pushed artists too far and I've regretted it and you know what, it hasn't worked out and we have to either reconcile the damage done or we part ways. But for me, I'd rather push an artist and keep them wondering like, what else am I capable of? Uh, to the point of, you know, exhaustion. Like, let's exhaust all of your resources and rather than just sort of sitting there and pressing record and expecting them to come up with their best material. There are some people who, who just do that, like Steven Tyler from Aerosmith just exudes talent and music, but there's so many people, especially people that I work with who are younger, who are first time in the recording studio, who need lots of vocal attention and lots of songwriting coaching. They need someone who is going to challenge them. And that's what I really like to do. You mentioned in, in your answer, the idea of, you know, if it doesn't work out, what does that mean? 
when you talk about working with an artist and you know doing something together and it doesn't work out? Does it mean that it's not creatively fulfilling the vision that you guys had, or what, what does that mean to you? Uh, I don't know. Usually, I spend a day with an artist, and at the, at the end of that day, if we're not catching a vibe, if we're not feeling like we're on the same page, then we usually say, you know what, that was fun. It was nice to meet you. We had lunch. We played some music. Maybe wrote half a song. Maybe wrote a full song. But oftentimes. Actually, not oftentimes, but occasionally, I meet up with someone to write or to produce, and we just don't see eye to eye. Someone wants to write a song about this, and I say, you know what, I don't see that for you, and I'll give you an example of a very well-known artist who had written about 50 songs, and we sat down and he asked me to listen to all these 50 songs. Recently, he had gone through a life-changing uh, metamorphosis, and the story of this was, uh, of his metamorphosis, was incredible. I listened to the 50 songs, none of them moved me. But his story about what was going on with his life brought me to tears. And I challenged him and I said, I think that people want to hear about this story. It's real, it happened to you, it's going to affect people, it affects me. So those are the, that's the type of thing that I look for. Okay. I want to ask you on that basis, how important is seeing an artist live? to determine if you're going to work with them or not? Or does that have any bearing? So important. Oh, okay. So important. Especially today where artists make less and less money off record sales and more and more money off of live touring. So I would say I rarely get deep into working with an artist. Sometimes, I think generally for me, I meet with someone for a day, we see if there's a vibe. The next step is I need to see you play live. I need to see if you have presence. I need to see if your vocals are real. There are some people who can sing very well in the studio, but then once they get on stage, they don't sing as well. Uh, now, some of that can be coached and they can improve, but some of it's just nerves. And some, some artists cannot eradicate their nerves. So, yeah, playing live is just really important. How can you expect, I mean, you know, back in the day, Michael Jackson didn't tour on Thriller, but now what artist today could possibly have a hit record and not tour behind it, not perform, and not perform rigorously. I mean, gosh, if you look at some of the artists today that are successful, uh, they're playing, you know, in New York uh, in the morning, and then LA at night, and then flying to London and playing the next day. It's uh, it's crazy what they're expected to do. So they need to have, uh, a, you know, be able to take on a rigorous schedule and uh, be durable to the performing life. And so much of that is. Uh, performing live. Okay. Eric, when you're working with an artist, uh, a lot of times, you know, you see artists at different levels. What's the most common mistake you see among new artists who have never been in the studio before? What mm -hmm. are the most common problems that you've encountered? Uh, I think the most common problem that I see is that artists expect things to happen in the studio quickly and right away. Uh, Oftentimes we get in the studio and they think, oh, we're going to record a song in a day and it's going to be a hit and then we're going to move on, we're going to record another song. That rarely happens. Good things take time. Uh, I like to spend extended periods of time with artists who I think I have a connection with and we have a connection together. So that's, that's the first thing, is that all the records that we love, they took time to make, months, years, half decades. Uh, and it's it's harder now with record budgets where they are to spend that amount of time here. It requires a big investment on the artist's part and on my part oftentimes to nurture something, to figure out what makes someone and their songs different, how to not make it just blend into uh, the mass you know media of songs that's out there. Uh, you know, I'll give an example. Uh, you know, like the Hozier song, mm -hmm. um, Take Me to Church, Take Me to Church, uh, doesn't sound like anything. And when that song came out, I think everyone said, oh my gosh, uh, those are the type of things that, uh, it's a, it was a daring song to put out. And uh, I don't know how long that record took to make, but I'm guessing it took a while to make because there were so many different directions that 
that could have gone. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's interesting listening to you because a lot of things that you're talking about are trust and chemistry between artist and producer yeah. in terms of the way things can go, the way things, you know, directions and so forth that they can take. Mm -hmm. From the point of view of an artist, in your experience, what are the specific qualities or the specific questions or the specific things that they should be looking for when choosing a producer to work with on a, on a project, especially a first project? That's a great question. Uh, they should be looking for someone who wants the same thing that they want, that will challenge them but won't put them down, will fight for them and what their artistry means, and will invest a lot of time into helping them with their goals. Uh, and to add one more thing, to also create a fair partnership where both sides are going to benefit from a recording, publishing, producing arrangement. Uh, it's hard to find. It's not easy. But uh, one of the things when artists write me and they say, hey, I want to work with you, oftentimes they'll say, why do you want to work with me? Uh, which records have I done that you really like? And sometimes I'll try and convince people not to work with me by saying, make a list of the producers that you really like. If I'm on it, then maybe we should work together. Sometimes a lot of these people are going to be out of your price range. You know, hey, you want to work with George Martin? It's probably not going to happen. Uh, but I really try and find with artists and I suggest to artists that they go for go for your your number one choice like hey if you like this record that I did um, I did this, re this record with the milk carton kids and a lot of people like that record and I got a lot of people reaching out to me saying I really I, this is a record that I, I want to this it's an archetype for my sound so that's kind of how I approach that okay all right Eric thank you so much for coming in and doing this I really absolutely. appreciate it thank you absolutely right